At this point, marketing as we knew it is about to change. OpenAI, an American artificial intelligence research lab, announced the launch of ChatGPT on 30 November 2022. It could answer complex questions, research, and write content. The world was hooked. In just five days, ChatGPT acquired one million users. Marketers started talking about this as a singularity. Rumors of AI replacing marketing teams started doing the rounds. Content processes built over the years seemed obsolete in a matter of minutes. Designers could see there was a competition they might need help to beat. SEO managers didn't know if this was an angel or a nightmare. It seemed that the lives of marketers would never be the same again. Isabella Bedoya has always been a fighter. In 2015, she was fresh out of college and had a negative $300 in her bank and a student loan that needed to be repaid. She was crashing on her mom's couch. Following her mom's advice, she started to sell her homemade protein-packed alternative for pesto on Facebook. This was 2015 and social media marketing was relatively new. To her surprise, she started getting orders and by the end of the week, she had made $2,500. This incident began her entrepreneurial journey, leading her to be named the second best private chef in Beverly Hills. She then pivoted to successfully running marketing campaigns for Fortune 500 companies. Her business was doing well until she decided to try ChatGPT. I actually stumbled upon AI when I was just learning about online marketing and I was getting into copywriting, funnel building and all of that. And I started using some tools like Copy AI, Jasper, uh, framework. This is, I think, back in like 2020 or 2021. And that eventually evolved into um, when I launched, I had at one point a video marketing offer where essentially we were editing TikToks, Reels, YouTube Shorts and stuff like that for our clients. And I remember going to like Upwork and they quoted like video, video editors on Upwork to create these like Alex Hormozzi style edits with like the engaging subtitles like that jump up at you and all that. I remember being quoted around like $45 an hour and for someone to do that exact style of editing, it was going to take about six to eight hours for one video, you know, $45 an hour, six, to, six hours to eight hours of editing. And you need to now do that 20 times for 20 videos for a whole month for a client. It was just not going to be a scalable offer. Um, it was going to be too moving, too many moving pieces, too expensive on the back end. So I decided to like look into some AI tools and I already had like knowledge about AI tools from uh, when I was doing like copywriting. What that actually hel helped me do is I found these tools like CapCut, Captions AI, Video AI, um, all of that. And now you could bulk edit multiple videos at once. And like a four hour shift, she'd be able to like knock out, you know, at least like one or two weeks worth of content, which is so much more scalable and way easier and better than the alternative, the manual method, the traditional method. Since then, she has built a successful network of AI marketers. Heather Murray is one of them. Heather Murray is a marketing agency owner based out of the UK. When she used ChatGPT for the first time, she was surprised by the sheer number of jobs this tool could simplify for a business owner like her. I looked at all of my processes and I thought, first of all, I can I can shrink them, I can, I can speed them up, which in itself creates profit. So I can deliver the same or better results but take a lot less time doing them. Currently, she's making sure that her team is well-versed with ChatGPT and has incorporated it in their work routine. Heather is not the only marketer who has seemingly gained control over ChatGPT and made it their ally. Since the launch of ChatGPT in 2022, an army of ad-driven marketers has emerged all over social media who have embraced this advancement and are educating the community now. Audrey Chia, a copywriter with five plus years of experience, describes AI as an opportunity to gain a competitive edge. My journey started only because um Finally, my client messaged me and said one day, Hey Audrey, you're going to be replaced. And then he sent me a link of ChatGPT. And I was like, oh, shocking, how could you say that? And maybe I'm going to be replaced. I had two choices, right? I could either fight the current or I could ride the tide. And so I chose the latter and decided, okay, why not?
Audrey wasn't alone in her quest to challenge the AI takeover. Najma Salam, who has been in marketing for years now, was intrigued rather than scared by the potential of AI. Every time I feel fear, it's a good sign for me to just barrel into it like headwards, like very stubborn goats, and go straight in there. So any fear I felt was kind of quickly replaced by like curiosity. So I just started, you know, getting into it. Her workplace too had a role in getting her inducted into the world of AI. At my old workplace, we just started having weekly sessions where we were where we would have kind of like a show and tell or a discussion of like, what did you use AI for this week? For some marketers, however, the journey to AI has been more about finding functionality and fun. Drew Brucker, marketer extraordinaire, got into Midjourney to try out how it works and ended up being hooked on its potential. In between V1 and V. 5.2, the quality just escalated so quickly and so much that it be, it took this shift from becoming a fun thing and solely just kind of playing around with it to, holy cow, like this actually has some utility in my business, right? Like in my day-to-day -day job, I could use this. Besides being a marketer, Drew is also a passionate photographer, but he'd have less time for his camera between work and daddy duties until Midjourney came along. As a photographer, it really scratched this nice itch for me because when I had kids, like time to edit photos or go out to a location or show up at a location at the right time because photography is all about light. Those kind of things didn't really, they weren't as available to me, right? I didn't have two hours to spend editing a photo to perfection like I like to do. You know, that was very much like an artistic hobby of mine. And so what Midjourney did was provide this middle ground between almost like photography and graphic design where I could play around. And then some have been in the marketing landscape long enough to know that it's the natural evolution of content marketing. Ben Pines, director of content at AI21 Labs, an open eye rival that has raised $64 million recently, recalls similar reactions when SEO came into the picture. When I started, it was the big, like SEO was like AI. You created a website and without any effort, you automatically got, got ranking. Google evolved and uh, you could only rank if you created actually valuable content. My career has evolved with evolution of, of content, of video content, written content. And I think AI is now the continuation of the same evolution. He propagates the same message to his team and online followers. AI tools will be helpful as long as you know where to draw the line between assistance and dependency. I'm not telling my writers not to use AI tools. Instead, I'm just getting their articles and assessing it to make sure it's written in a helpful way. But like everything else, the tale of marketers and AI isn't black or white. There has been a surge in tech layoffs in the past two years. AI, too, has played a small role if rumors are to be believed. Helena Taberka, co-founder of Videodeck, a successful video marketing agency, was shocked to find her video creation process being cited as a pain point on the website of an AI video generation tool. Apparently, the same AI video generation tool would require no actor or equipment and would create more videos in less time, unlike an agency. Intrigued by these claims, Helena tried this tool to determine if the quality of the video produced by this tool would live up to its claims. Most tools focus on the spokesperson generation part, which is usually not the most challenging part of video production. The benefit of working with a done-for-you video service like Videodeck is that we go beyond that. We take care of script writing, creating supporting graphics, animation, sound design, and of course the human spokesperson as well. AI tools may be an alternative, but ultimately, the choice comes down to factors like the purpose of your video marketing initiatives and the required budget. Similarly, if AI tools like ChatGPT have made certain jobs replaceable, it has also given birth to new career paths. One such job that everyone is raving about is that of a prompt engineer. Prompt engineers are now in huge demand, and as per some reports, they are even making six-figure salaries. Fortune 500 companies like Deloitte, PwC, and E&Y have invested billions of dollars in generative AI and are looking for talent to, to help them integrate it into their workflows. Does it mean you have to let go of a career built over many years and learn a completely new skill? Yes and no. Marketers, accountants, and practically every professional who has learned how to work with AI is doing well, 
in fact, better than they did before November 2022. Isabella Bedoya has seen this happening in her AI community. Her world was made better with ChatGPT, quite the opposite of what news headlines had claimed. This brings us to the next point. Is AI worth it? Like, how long did it take you to put together all of that? Like, the website, the landing page, the images, the copy? Probably, like, an hour or two. And if you wouldn't have used AI, like, how long do you think it would have taken you? That's where you start to realize the, the element of savings, right? At workplaces where marketers are chat GPT friendly, things are surely happening at lightning speed. It almost like a really, really supercharged intern, right? No more getting stuck with writer's block and delaying your deliverables. Writing meta descriptions for blogs that I've written. That actually takes like a surprising amount of time, especially if you've you have like written this 2000 word blog and your brain, like your headspace is not there. You know, and that's something that you can easily do with AI. You know, so like I was I was looking at tasks and I was thinking, okay, well, AI can actually be my co-pilot here, here and here. No more spending hours on admin tasks and getting your time back to focus on campaign ideas and strategy. Scott, at your beck and call, you have an employment lawyer, you have a business consultant, you have content marketing consultants, you have editors, proofreaders, all of them are right there. AI tools have freed marketers from any constraints related to budget, access, and even skill. If you can master AI tools, you can manage an end-to-end -end campaign alone, including aspects like strategy, copywriting, or design. On the other hand, AI tools have also forced marketers to pay more attention to quality than quantity. I think a unique perspective on the introduction of generative AI tools, wherein I think it, it caused us as writers to really think about what we do. Like if in the past you could have gotten away with using mediocre content, Publishing more blogs has become one of large marketing teams' most popular growth strategies. They list keywords and keep producing mediocre content to gain the lead in the search algorithm. These articles that looked like they were made by ChatGPT, even before ChatGPT was made, with long paragraphs, kind of talking very high level, the kind of B2B articles that are sort of generic. And I've always, like, for years, I've always looked at these articles and said, who is reading them? Although Google has tried to curb this situation with multiple updates in their algorithm with what they call the helpful content update, larger marketing teams with more writers would still have an advantage over small players. AI has thus leveled the playing field. Turning out a huge content volume is no longer a problem for a marketing team, be it of any size. The problem now that every content marketer will get ample time to grapple with is improving content quality. And I think it passed off because, you know, th this was the available content. And now you can just produce these uh, articles at scale. And what that does is it causes the consumers, the people who are supposed to read it, to be a lot more suspicious and a lot more uh, challenging. And, and uh, because they know they, this, this article might have been created by AI, so it just takes writers that want to succeed to a next level where... They really need to think and research the article. Many marketers also vouch for AI tools when it comes to research. Brainstorming ideas and creating blog outlines are the most popular use cases of ChatGPT. But should one go beyond this structural assistance and rely on AI tools to get the most accurate information? Currently, the answer is a shaky maybe and at best a no. Um, I don't know if you saw in the news, there was like a lawyer that used like uh, an AI hallucination in the courtroom. Um, for anyone that's listening, an AI hallucination is essentially anything that's like fictional that the AI creates, uh, but it sounds super realistic. So it's just being careful. To understand this, we must look into how any AI tool works. Let's take the example of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is based on a deep learning technique called a large language model trained on massive amounts of publicly available internet data to process and understand natural language. As a result, it can generate answers and content on any topic in seconds, but its accuracy depends on the web pages it has crawled for information. So, if you do not trust the first article of your Google search result without fact-checking with multiple other articles, you shouldn't blindly trust AI tools as well. When you create ChatGPT content, and I see it over and over again, edit it, fact-check it, because people, it hallucinates, it lies, and people are getting very complacent with that. 
Generative AI leaders are trying hard to solve this problem though. GPT-Bot, OpenAI's new web crawler, is designed to help OpenAI improve its training data and increase the accuracy and capabilities of its AI solutions by acquiring publicly available data from across the internet. However, their efforts to perfect AI tools have impacted other creators and online communities. Stack Overflow, an online community trusted by programmers worldwide since 2008, has suffered a major decline in visitors since the launch of ChatGPT. Jeff Atwood and Joel Spolsky created Stack Overflow as a platform where developers get answers from other developers and discuss any dilemma with a global dev community. Over the years, it grew in popularity and size. It even raised $6 million in VC by Union Square Ventures in 2010. It was the first platform that developers visited when getting stuck, until ChatGPT came along. Instead of asking a question in a community or looking for the right answer, a user can now instruct tools like ChatGPT to fetch them the answer within a few seconds. While this has made the experience much better for users, it has directly impacted business models that depend on data and content. Multiple authors and content creators have also realized that their work is being used without permission to train AI models, which will eventually become their competition or hog away all the website traffic. This situation has urged organizations to block AI crawlers to protect their content or develop in-house AI models. This means marketers can utilize AI to improve their processes, but humans will most likely always be in the loop. Do you remember the time before Google? I think not. Soon, the time before ChatGPT will be for history books, and you'll wonder how you survived without it. Many marketers are already integrating AI into their existing workflows. Lucas Kemkis, a generative AI strategist who has built Cratext.ai, a generative AI tool for sales tech, uses AI and Melmoto's custom content feature to send personalized content to every newsletter subscriber. So to generate personalized newsletters, you can use the custom fields in Melmoto that's, for example, um, instead of having just hi first name and then the rest of your text, you have hi first name. And then you have a placeholder for first sentence. And then you have a placeholder for first paragraph, etc. And then you use AI to generate these texts and you put all of them in a spreadsheet in a CSV file and you upload that to Melmoto. And then you can send out a Melmoto campaign, but it's not everybody's getting the same text. Everybody's actually getting their own personalized text, and that was very exciting for me. Similarly, Audrey has been using AI to create targeted and personalized LinkedIn outreach strategies for her clients. But it's so cool. <laughs> Just the, the fact that you could prompt with a persona in mind and with their audience in mind and create an output that resonates with their audience is incredible. Drew also brings up another example of the seamless adoption of AI by recalling how he used AI to generate multiple options for a logo with a concept he already had in mind. I was already using AI, like, you know, ChatGPT, for example, to think through, hey, what's like a cool name for this event that associates with our brand, right? So our brand was associated with like cowboy culture, Wild West, you know, the company's name was Lasso. So like, what can we call this, right? And as you know, like AI is fantastic for brainstorming quickly came up with this idea for campfire you know it's like oh that's cool it sounds intimate small like all those things and started developing the landing page for this event you know and, and started to you know really utilize ai for that and then i thought man now we kind of need like an image you know to associate with this event right and i'd already kind of been playing with some ideas behind lasso and if i could kind of get the technology to work with me there and ultimately landed on a great image. Like Drew, Audrey, and Lucas, many marketers have stumbled upon AI use cases which they have implemented. But moving AI from individual use cases to empowering your entire marketing team is very different. This is the critical hour for most marketing leaders. Onboarding AI in daily marketing processes is something no one is clear about. Do you bite the AI bullet or just sit it out till it's unavoidable? It's just a bunch of like 20, like an article can have like 20 different ideas. And if you don't, if you're, you're not at the helm, it's it's not only not necessarily helpful, it's, it's also kind of dangerous because what are you saying? This is your name 
And what exactly are you saying in there? How, have you corroborated it? Marketing leaders also need to determine if they want to invest in upskilling their teams or outsource a chunk of the work to agencies that use A. Long way of saying, it need, if you're a marketer or a marketing leader, you need to think of one of three things with something like mid-journey, and it doesn't matter if it's mid-journey or any other image generation platform for that matter, but do I have somebody that can spend the time with it to learn it because it does require repetition and experimentation? Do I want to bring in somebody that can train and upscale my team, which is one of the areas that I'm specifically focused in? Or do I just want to like get the work done and outsource it to somebody that knows what they're doing? Of course, outsourcing does seem like a simpler option, but Audrey suggests that thinking about a long-term strategy for an A literate team would make sense. I would think about it from a management level. I would actually intentionally make time for my team to explore and weave it into their, their processes, right? Make it kind of a like monthly goal. Um, and with that kind of progression and being able to edit your, your daily lives, then you will be able to see like the results in the long term. Additionally, marketers need to have set guidelines for their team about AI usage, adoption, and limitations. These SOPs will eliminate fears about replacement and false expectations from AI and encourage quick adoption in the team. I think getting everyone on the same page with regards to what it is what its limitations are, what is okay to use it for and not use it for. Um, all of that stuff I think should be a really important part of any onboarding, if, especially if it's new to the team at large. The next generation of marketers may very well have individual AI co-pilots tailored to their specific field of work, helping them achieve efficiency and scale not possible earlier. But that's a far off scenario. The path to that point in time will go through many stages of evolution. The most important one is not getting overwhelmed by all this AI buzz. The young and upcoming marketers must choose between learning the craft by doing grunt work or getting it done in a jiffy with an AI. If you're a new writer, don't use AI. <laughs> like the, this is the, the, the reason why I'm saying this is because you need to first get your foundations right. Like when you have a strong foundation, when you know what makes good copy great, when you have written a hundred different headlines, that is when you can see what makes something work. Without that, right, you're jumping the gun, you're going straight to the end result, right? Try and make mistakes and discover your unique style before using AI to amplify it further. Are you good at writing puns? Do you play around with unique color combinations in images? Do you have a knack for finding great background music for videos? These are a few things that help you build a marketing style. There are other side effects as well. The virtual world is all around us now, especially because of AI. And this means that marketers might lack the real-life experiences that consumers have. That's a gap AI cannot fill for any marketer. To step out of the virtual world. It's super important to, step, to not stay in the digital world. AI even draws us more into kind of being in digital and not talking to real people. So stepping out, uh, for example, if you're writing an article on uh, uh, quitting smoking. If you're not going to quit smoking yourself, at least talk to someone who quit smoking because AI can produce things about quitting smoking, but AI doesn't smoke. So so that's super important just to, to stay connected to, to the real wor world. Campaigns generated by a machine that works based on algorithms and does not understand audiences' pain points will never work. A machine cannot add empathy to your marketing copies. Those um, idiosyncrasies and the events that happen that are human and cannot be predicted by an AI are going to be much more valued in the future as well. So, you know, people with accents, people with a squeaky chair or people who say make mistakes when they talk, I think that is going to become more and more valuable as, as we go forward. The real challenge will be finding the balance between working with A without compromising your essential human qualities as a marketer. You're working with AI and not just being a slave of what it generates. It's going to make your role a lot more efficient and faster. And if you're able to use it in a high level way uh, where you can actually get quality outputs out of it, then it's going to make your role at your job or at your business even better. And you're going to be able to focus on the on the on your like expertise, right? You're going to be able to actually hone in on the parts where you actually get to showcase your expertise and use your critical thinking, your human perspective, your insights and all of that. So that's essentially how I got started into, in AI. Um, 
you know, it was a lot of a lot of aha moments and pivotal moments of seeing like how to leverage this technology. But at the end of the day, this is where the whole whole world is at. And the cool thing is, is that we're all doing this together. It's not like, you know, AI is still pretty new. So we're all kind of going through this this era together. And right now it's just a matter of um, Mark Cuban actually says it best. Mark Cuban says there's only two businesses of the future, either um, those who use AI and those who don't, meaning it's a really good idea to start implementing AI technologies into your businesses um, because you run the risk of being left behind and that's where you don't want to be. So that's where the opportunity lies right now. AI is here to stay, whether we like it or not. The only question is our attitude towards it. I might be looking like a nemesis for marketers, or for some, like the need of the hour. But like other technologies, it depends on how we use it and what for.